well, did you know this about Hockman history? Did you know that? I said, no, what do you know about that? Nothing, somebody told me. And it was like this game of telephone. Everybody had these little bits, and nobody knew what was going on. So I got kind of frustrated, and I said, all right, I'm going to go to the library. And that room right there, they used to call the treasure room which meant that everything they ever had about history was just stuffed in there. So Hopkinton resident Chuck Joseph presented the history of Hopkinton at the public library. The event was hosted by the Friends of the Hopkinton Public Library, along with the Hopkinton Chamber of Commerce. Sponsors included Merrill Lynch Investment Services, Middlesex Savings Bank, and Phipps Insurance. A huge turnout was on hand, to get a brief glimpse into the extensive history of Hopkinton. So in the 1700s, go ahead and next slide. Uh, that's Town Hall, by the way, right across the street. That is the third Town Hall on that site. Um, if you look above the two front windows in there, you'll see 1715, beautiful photograph taken by Eileen. And on the other window is 1902, the year they erected that brick Town Hall. That was the third Town Hall that was built on that site. Well, the primary resource is the town meeting notes, which we are privileged to have from the 1700s till the present, the original notes, and in hand script, and you can go and read those. It's a little tedious, but it really works well. There's a lot of resources here at the Hopkinton Library, um, but if you go online, you know, you go into, it kind of takes you down different algorithms, and you go into libraries all over the country. You've probably been researching it about 15 years now. Um, these are samples of some of the notes, and it was a challenge to read these notes because they didn't know how to write, and they didn't know how to spell. And every time they changed who was taking the town meeting notes, I had to figure out what that person didn't know how to spell. It was, it was it's, it's a blast. It's kind of fun to do, but it's also a little frustrating. I understand you've done a lot of these uh, presentations. Do you have any more of these presentations coming up? Yeah, they always kind of evolve into different things. So there's a group that wants me to do one on the history of Hopkinton schools. So we may, we may do something with that because there is a really interesting history there. Uh, I'm working now on the uh, history of ideology, the ideological heritage that comes from Hopkins. It's very rich, and I think people are unaware of it. You know, we always look at buildings because they're tangible, but the things that are not tangible are just as important. The shoe industry just explodes, and there are 11 shoe factories in Hopkinton. At our peak, we're making 6,000 pairs of shoes per day, every day. In 1885, we produced 1,652,000 pairs of shoes out of Hopkinton. We were the third largest shoe producer in the country. And do you have a favorite topic uh, that you've researched about Hopkinton or you just enjoy um, Every Every part has something different in. And, you know, after I've done four or five of the same lectures, I kind of want to veer off and do something a little different. So there's always more to learn. All right, well, it was a very uh, interesting presentation. Amazing to see uh, the buildings from the 1800s compared to now. Uh, it's, it's great when you drive around town now. You can kind of picture what was there. That's the 1970s. When I first came to town, Bill's Pizza was Brown and Smith's. How many here remember Brown and Smith's? No one? Okay. <laughs> uh, Brown and Smith's was like the old spoon. You know, you went in there in the morning, and you just learned everything about what was going on in town. <laughs> and, of course, that's today. Thanks, Eileen, for all these photographs, by the way. She gets up at 5 o'clock in the morning and get these photographs with the little cars out there. <laughs> this is the uh, train, one of the three trains that came from town. That's the ticket booth over there. Today, if you go there, it's Hopkinton Lumber. All right, and the center trail across the street was the railroad that took you down to Milford. It was also one that took you to Westboro. It was one that took you uh, behind ABC Street, down the bottom of the hill, under 135 to Ashland and into Boston, and that's how they got the shoes to the port. The ticket booth uh, was disassembled. Nobody knew where it was for years. It was in somebody's house. Eagle Scout found out about it, decided it would be a great project. Go ahead, have next slide. Rebuilt it at the bottom of the hill down in the ice pond. That is the ticket booth from the trail from the railroad station in the 1860s, 1870s in Hopkinton. And it's still a ticket booth inside if you want. And the center trail across there is just a continuation of the railroad. This is looking east from what would be around CBS. I love the trees. Look how big the trees are, right? CBS looking up the hill. You look at it today, of course you're looking down and then you go around the corner up. This is the old high school, part of that building boom. This is the Buckland House. He was the veterinarian. He also operated the people. <laughs> uh, this is looking west, going towards uh, the top of the hill to 495, if you will. And that's what it looks like today.
today, same thing. Go ahead. Uh, that, of course, is the, this is the new central place. This is going to be the Central House restaurant. And if you look up there, you will see a photograph afterwards. You can go up and take a look of the 200th anniversary uh, at, the, at the Central House Tavern. And that is right on the same site as this brick building.